Intermediate Accounting 10A Financial Ratios. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, our email, and our phone number. What I've done is jumped over to a balance sheet. So we can see for this company that we have a balance sheet, assets, liabilities, and stockholders equity. And also below it we have statement of income, profit and loss, and we have retained earnings at the bottom. And what I'm doing here is using this financial information as data to talk about these ratios. We've talked about these on a prior video. We have liquidity ratios which deal with whether or not the company has money to operate in the short term. Think about your checkbook. Solvency ratios, do you have money to make it in the long term, over the long haul? For example, do I have money to pay down principal and interest on debt over the long term? And profitability ratios. I'm going to start at the top of the page. I'm just going to use 2012 data to answer these questions. So the first one we have is working capital, which is current assets minus current liabilities, which gets to looking at the things that are cash or will become cash in the next year which is current assets and subtract from that items that I need to pay with cash in the short term within 12 months is our definition of a current asset or liability within 12 months so if we look at current assets it includes cash but also asset items we expect to convert into cash within a year so we might sell marketable securities we will collect receivables from people we've sold things to. If we don't collect the receivable, it's not truly a receivable and we'd write it off. We'd sell inventory within a year. If we don't sell the inventory, it's obsolete and we would write it off. It's not inventory anymore. And we would expense our prepaid items within a year. Going down further, current liabilities, all the bills that we have to pay, the current portion of long-term debt, note payable, Bills that we have to pay to the utility company, the trash pickup, whomever, and salary payable. So if we look at the answer that we have for 2012, and I click on it, and look at the cell, it's the current assets of 250000 in blue less, the current liabilities 151800 in green. And that's my working capital. So I'm about $98,000 ahead of where I need to be to pay my current liabilities. I can look at it instead in a ratio. B is current ratio. I can look at current assets divided by current liabilities. And obviously, we want the numerator, the assets, to be greater than the denominator, which says we have more assets than liabilities. So let's click on the cell and look at the formula. In this case, it's 250 current assets in blue divided by 151, 800 current liabilities in green. And so our ratio is greater than 1. It happens to be 1.65, which means for every dollar of liabilities we have to pay within the next year, which is current, we have more than a dollar in assets, which is good. And again, whether these ratios are good or bad depends very much on what type of industry you're in. C, quick ratio or asset test ratio says, let's exclude inventory from that current asset total, assuming that of the current assets that I have over here, the one that will be take the longest to convert to cash would be inventory, because we have to find people to buy the inventory. So let's subtract inventory from our current assets, take that total, and divide it by current liability. So if I click on the cell, and highlight. You see that we have 250,000 in assets and we subtract the 135,000 in inventory which is a big chunk over half of it. That's our numerator. Our denominator is the current liabilities 151,800. And so we find that our ratio is now below 1 which means for every dollar of current liabilities the numerator is about 76 cents to pay that dollar in liabilities over the next year. 
So those are sort of checkbook current assets versus current liability ratios A, B, and C. Let's think about receivables. Receivables turnover is net credit sales, those sales that we sell on credit where we don't get paid right away, divided by average gross receivables. Now this chart I explained to the student does not show everything we need. I don't know, for example, if the sales are all credit sales, so I used this revenue number and I assumed it was all on credit. Gross sales would be gross receivables, excuse me, would be receivables before sales discounts and allowances. I'm going to assume that the receivables are gross receivables. And for average, what I've done for 2012, if I click on the cell, is take 2012 plus 2011 accounts receivable and divide by 2 to come up with an average. And what my formula does is take the revenue number at the bottom here it is, the 238 in blue, and I'm dividing it by that gross receivable average in green here, and I see that my sales are about 4.76 times my receivables. So that's a measure of how quickly am I collecting my receivables? How quickly is the money turning over and changing from a receivable into cash? We can be more specific in E and say, how many days does it take to collect on a receivable average collection period? So I'm going to take 365 the days in a year, and I'm going to divide it by the receivable turnover ratio, which I just found out is 4.76. So if I take 365 divided by 4.76 in blue, I find that it takes 77 days to collect a typical receivable. Now, depending on your business, that may be a long time compared to your industry average or a short time. Bigger ticket items, you can imagine Caterpillar that sells huge pieces of construction equipment. Because it's so expensive, you may not get paid in full for a long time, maybe 90, 120 days, maybe longer. If somebody goes in and buys um, some fertilizer from you from your hardware store, and they're a contractor that does landscaping, maybe they pay within 30 days. So it depends on your industry. But it's important to know that if you extend somebody credit, how long will it take on average for them to pay you? Because this all has to do with how much cash do I need to cover these receivables because you're essentially extending credit to people. The last one we'll talk about on this video is inventory turnover. Receivables talked about sales versus receivables, credit sales versus receivables. Inventory talks about cost of sales versus average inventory. So for 2012, I took the inventory for 2012 plus 2011 and divided by 2 to get an average, which was 139000 And I took my cost of sales, which I took from the income statement. There's cost of goods sold, 120000 And if I click on the cell, I see that my 120000 in cost of sales divided by my average inventory is 0.86, which means that inventory typically is 86% of my cost of sales, which means if you flip it over, only 14% of the people are paying in cash on average, only 14% of our sales is not in inventory. You can look at it that way. So if I sell $100 worth of stuff, I have $86 left in inventory to get an idea of the ratio. Obviously, we want to minimize, if we can, the inventory that we have to keep on hand. And then finally, the number of days to sell my inventory, I take the 365 and I divide it by that inventory 
turnover ratio, and I see that it takes me over a year, 423 days, to sell my inventory, which is a pretty long time. That means that once I either make that piece of inventory or buy it into my inventory, I'm having to hang on to it for a long, long time. It's taking me a long time to collect that cash. That's as far as we're going to get on financial ratios. For more topics that are not on the web, you'll see a web page that lists videos you can get by topic. You can access either the spreadsheet templates or the videos themselves. Here's our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, all one word. You can email me for a complete list of our YouTube videos. For live one-on-one -on -one tutoring and chat, chat sessions, here's the website, stltest.net. Finally, here's my email and my phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.